Good evening, all. It's 4.30 p.m. on uh, Wednesday, uh, April 26, 2023. We're coming down to you from the lovely downtown Cape Naples uh, on southwest Florida. Temperature about 86 and sunny. Uh, and uh, Tico is very happy. That's what matters. Yesterday, I had a tough day in the market. Today was okay, but I, I made kind of similar Errors, but different, much smaller factor. Yeah, just you, you get too cocky, and they teach you a lesson. You get humbled, and then you you bring up your guards. So interesting day, though. Uh, what you see is Tiger Shark. I'll make a couple of comments about it. Uh, there's been a lot of comments or rumors about what's going on. Um, suffice to say, it is our. Uh, uh, while we're very happy with what Orb is doing and the changes we have done to it. To 4.91, and also Orb is the uh, opening range bound, uh, bear couch system that we have. Has been out there about two years. As a matter of fact, right when Orb was put out, I started working. Yeah, you know, I, I gotta keep busy. I, I get bored. I gotta do something uh, challenging. You know, I, that's how you keep yourself young. And so uh, uh, I had a couple of uh, algorithms that were uh, uh, standalone. And it was not easy to program, so wasn't trying to automate it, but wanted to uh, build something that would work outside of Orb region, which is uh, um, uh, more hours. Uh, we trade any day. Uh, we would trade basically like pretty much since the boys show up in New York to work like six o'clock, seven o'clock Eastern, uh, in way yeah, a couple of hours after London opens, and could trade. Into the earnings, for example, and so not restricted like or for two, two and a half hours, uh, and uh, uh, and so I always, as you know, I have programs uh, or systems that are named after uh, the Northrop aircraft, Northrop Grumman. And I had the privilege of working on the three F twenties. Uh, two of them crashed, and the company basically had a hard time selling them. To overseas, we were in a good spot, but you cannot fight with the Air Force. The Air Force wanted to push their plan, so uh, because they have R and D to recapture, and we got almost as close as F sixteen our turn rate, which is what F sixteen is not known for. You know, because a small wing, you can really turn fast and pull pretty much same amount of G's. Uh, but the the front end was F five, this area. The back end was F eighteen engine. Obviously, avionics were very, very good. Radar, top of the line. This was actually the shape that we shaped this part, thus the word sh shark. If you look at it head on, it looks like a shark coming after you. Thus the word tiger shark, because that five series were called tiger and tiger two. Um, anyhow, uh, it was developed in a building called PDC, North of Engineering. Uh, we're at that time part of uh, advanced systems. Uh, uh, occupied the top floor of, PD, uh, of the engineering. So I could, from my window, I could see some of the work, not the aircraft itself, because it was covered, but so a bunch of people going in, going out all the time. At lunchtime, there was a walkway you could go in there. Of course, I had act, you know, I'd like pass, shall we say, given my access level. And uh, I spent a lot of time there. Uh, earlier, before I that, I'd, I'd worked on uh, some poor uh, planning. For the uh, some of the parts uh, for this aircraft. So, anyhow, we call this code Tiger Shark. Uh, it's been developed. It's been added to more stuff. We have one more module left. It's basically an institutional product. It's not for mom and pops. You know, you need to trade NQ with it, and I would say something around 100 NQs. So it's not. It's not going to be available for subscription. We're not trying. We're not. It's really for TC. It's for uh, capital management work. Our capital work. That is. We, we we manage it for, and I have two hedge funds who are looking at it. One of them wants to be exclusive, and I told them, well, you know, after X amount of dollars in, yeah, we can get, you can get it exclusive. And uh, we put a little uh, Zoom together, it has its own machine, doesn't interfere with anything else. It's not on the website. You have to be invited in. Uh, and basically, again, we're not leasing it like Orb, we are. it's not for subscription, it's strictly uh, management. And the split is zero thirty, no management fee, thirty percent of net 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 new profit, like uh, high watermark system, okay, in the hedge funds. So 
I can't trade that account. Uh, so on. So there's a little restrictions involved. But uh, uh, the, the, we have one module left that has to do with uh, uh, a very dynamic risk management. As we got more work done on ORB, we noticed, I say this up front, there's no denying it, uh, trade station has some shortfalls inside of their trade manager. And it's just there's some, there's some invisibility there, okay? When you're trading 100 NQ contracts, you can't afford that. It's not gonna happen. You're gonna blow off. So that module is being worked at. As a matter of fact, that one programmer and I wrote the SOW. Uh, I mean, I wrote it up, he cleaned it up. Then he offered to do a, what's called a, uh, a, 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 a mock-up of that, that panel, because there's a panel involved, okay? It's, it's not a, it's, I mean, first we thought we were gonna do a radar screen. It wasn't very smart. But you have a custom panel with buttons on it that shows the, how many contracts you long or short, how many stops you have, how many exits you have, what's your, uh, how much margin you're using right now. Remember, precision doesn't compute that properly. It only gives you a night vision, a night rate. And so during the day, you think you're being blown up or you're getting a margin call, you're not. But they don't have, they haven't programmed that, how to manage uh, different rates, okay? Those shortfalls we're going to fix. Uh, uh, and then, uh, uh, there's also, you know, how much of the cap, you know, starting capital in the morning that gets recorded, and then as we go up and down, the percentages are shown. You also see max risk, so that you know, for example, let's say your max risk is eight percent, that means you can only risk eight percent of your balance as of the open. Okay, that kind of stuff. So you would have a steady move. If you have a bad day, you lose a little bit, but if you have a good day, you let it run, and that's the whole key. You know, covers early. That your losses and yet let your winners run. That kind of stuff in a in a, uh, a platform that's a, you can move it around. It's floating, so you can and, the, and it's done by account. So you put the account number in, pops the alias, so you know whose account it is. Then it shows all the details that account confidentially. So we put a machine together just for demo. Two H ones already been looking at it, and uh, we'll we'll continue doing that for next uh, three or four weeks. And then we'll see who's interested to play it. Okay. That's what Target Shark is all about. There were a lot of questions about like, can we add it to Orb and all that? We're not doing that. It's not even Orb. It's a different animal. Totally different animal. Part of the problem is it's very complicated. It took us a while to teach people how to use Orb, including when we had a user guide and videos. I cannot fathom how I'm going to get fit. I would have time to teach folks to trade Target Shark. It's not made for that. It's made for being traded from here, okay? And you do need very, very fast transmission because you have to, remember, you, you look at multiple stuff at computing and you have to really understand your risk reward. You don't have to trade a lot, but you've got to come in at extremes and uh, that, that's just a combination of more, some of our best, uh, best of the breed indicators over the years. Remember, I don't use anything brand new. Target Shark has been in the coding mode I'd say uh, pretty much by the time 2020 election was over, like December of 2020, we have been there. So it's two plus two years in it. Is that is that the right estimate? Yeah, yeah. Right about the time that we went long, I mean, we went out with the ORB, I started working on it myself. But I didn't get any big traction or speed in development until one well, of the programmers got really bored with Orbit says, Give me something else to do. I said, oh, there's a couple of modules I want to do for this. And uh, that's where we are. Uh, it also colors on the screen. That's the part I didn't know how to do. I'm not good at graphics of a trade station. It colors it on the screen so you could see by different squares and circles where these events are. So you would know, for example, is it Momo come kicking in or is he uh, more of a, uh, sorry. That's the spam. Is it Momo kicking in or is it a steady move? You know, uh, I won't mention any names. This will maybe only confuse you, but is it is it instantaneous moves are coming in or is it the boat has shifted? Is like is it Nimitz carrier? It's turning left. You know, that sort of thing. So, and those are our visual, a very intense visual. Plus, it continuously does a buy and sell 
su suggestions with the visual dynamic trading style. So you know your risk as adjusted. Yeah, it's a very interesting setup. And probably the best thing we've worked on is a combination of 25 years of my experiences. So anyhow, that's about Tiger Shark. So, so I hope that puts it in bed what we're up to. We wanted to put it here, short and sweet, get it recorded. It's on the website. Those of you who work for a hedge fund or are a hedge fund, if you're interested, you can contact us. Again, it's not for it is it's for money management. It is not for uh, retail subscription or anything. Okay. With that said, hold on. Yeah, let's take this out and we go to our regular presentation. Uh housekeeping wise, okay. Uh the programmer for for, for FIBO is a little bit behind. Uh, because of the project that he's doing also with, uh, in conjunction with Tracetion itself. Yeah, yeah. They're doing something bigger than normal. <laughs> and so he's a little bit behind. And then I torpedoed him with this. I said, you got to finish that module for me. So hopefully within a day or two, we can get the module to get started. Uh, first programmer and I are not finished yet. We're almost there. But uh, we rather do the all the, what we want and need in writing. It takes you an hour gives you a chance to pause and uh, question yourself, is it this what we want to do? What should be a layout, that kind of stuff, rather than haphazardly start programming, and then I'm hitting them with the engineering changes that will drive them nuts, and so does the, our uh, cost. Yeah, well, the, this stuff is not cheap. Hey, Michael, hey, CM Mac, welcome, guys. Oh, okay, a lot of folks came in, all right. Uh, Investor Jack, how are you, sir? We miss you. Let's see, hey, hey, Shari, how are you? Uh, Dennis is here, and uh, uh, hey, Nancy, I want to get you on the other side. Uh, hi, Scott, how are you, sir? So that's that issue. So we'll, we'll catch up on 5.0. In the meantime, 4.91 is doing pretty good. I have no problems, as far as I can tell. From Hi, Thomas, how are you? The system houses, which was the biggest challenge. Uh, about five words for them and report any problems. So, in fact, they're beginning to pick up clients coming back in. No, no, not necessarily new clients, but mainly clients, maybe one or two, but mainly clients who were there before, but they went on a pause per my recommendation, saying, guys, we don't know what's wrong here. Uh, we need a little bit of time. Save your capital. Uh, just, just pause it. Pause it. We'll let you go back on. And they're beginning to come back in. We'll probably do more on that, but for now, that's where we are. Okay, that's that's housekeeping. I don't have anything else to report. Uh, okay. okay, economic calendar. All right, we, today we had GDP and uh, of course jobless claims. Actually, I did not check jobless claims. Let me take a look. Hold on. 230 to 250, I see. Wait a second. No, that's tomorrow. What am I thinking? I forget what day it is. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's the wrong one. GDP is what I looked at. Let me say, not GDP. Durable goods was looked at this morning. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, let's go there. My, my apologies. That's it. Right, right, right. Up 3.2 plus versus a 0.12 that was revised down. And the consensus was 0 0.90. Okay. Of course, Google was also, I kind of liked it, but I have a bias. Microsoft really, really hit out of the ballpark. And then extrapolate. So that was a lift today. That and GDP. You have extrapolation that came at 0.3, much further than consensus. They missed. I mean, both of these they really missed in terms of uh, these econs. You know, but you know, as they trust Paul said, I never saw a uh, single handed economist. Or a rich one, for that matter, yeah. Uh, big swing here, big swing. 0.2 went to negative 0.7, they rise down. They get 0.2 consensus and then negative 0.4. So, not good. Uh, part of that is cost of carry. With interest rates this high, you, you're really ordering just in time. And uh, the uh, also, manufacturing part is doing, doing the same. They're not holding 
much inventory. They try to work off with inventory. Most of the reporting you've seen on their earnings that have a retail component, they've, they've been complaining about. Yeah, we're working on inventory, but that's ongoing. Probably last six months they have been. They never thought the rate's going to be this high. I got news for you. I think the rate's going to go a lot higher until we have a real positive rates where uh, the the rates above inflation is a, maybe a one to two percent spread. I, I don't see it right now. Uh, now mortgage apps were better. That's for sure. Looks like some some buying came in. Uh, you know, some, some sales. There we go, four six. Uh, yeah, and then of course a uh, little bit of a life in the refinance, but these rates. If that, this is too early for refinance to be anything. But uh, but look at the change there on their purchases. Yeah. If do people think it's the end of a uh, uh, rate hikes? I don't think so. But what do I know? I just got. As Dennis knows, I just got off the boat in Miami. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What do we have for tomorrow? Let's look at GDP. Yeah. And then pending home sales. Those two are going to be crucial. 8.30 and 10. Okay. 2620. Oh. I, 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 this has got to get revised. <laughs> and range 1.3 to 3.3. Okay. This is what you want to look at Friday. I know it's green, it's not red, but this is what you want to look at. ECI. Oh, everybody at Fed is glued to this one. Uh, let's see. Pending home sales tomorrow, 10 a.m. 0.3 to 0.4. Yeah. consensus, 0.4. Wow, that's a big range. They get one to one. Okay. We shall see. Yeah, this is this is the trade. Uh, this is the so the trades are in escrow, not finished yet. Uh, let's see. Nothing else there. Just okay. I remember the very quiet period. All of a sudden, last week we had a bunch of uh, uh, talking heads from Fed, and now they're all history because we're going into next week, which would be yeah, that's twenty eight. Let's see. Which would be, uh, I think, second and third is a uh, Fed meeting, right? Right. Okay. All right. Come on. Uh, come on. All right. So, personal income and outlays. Right. Fourth week of the month. Point three, point two, a little down tick. Okay. Point two, point zero. Okay. And then this, this is a wide range. Okay, uh, PC price index. Basket of goods and services that are just in CPI, which is fixed mass because I see. Okay, uh, I would also pay attention to this, guys. The uh, PC price index, okay, point one is a consensus of point three, so. Now taking at that again, decent range. Uh, I don't know about the rest. I'm not an economist. I got to pretend to. ECI, there we go. Eight thirty to uh, Friday. Uh, one wound. Yeah, yeah, that's tight. That's tight. So probably no surprise in ECI. Okay. All right. I don't look at. Baker Hughes, uh, Red Cap anymore, but uh, crude oil probably is a good representation. All right, let's go. Okay, let's go through charts. I did refresh the charts here, but these two may need a refresh. I'm sorry, since the close. Uh, uh, because I probably started early. I re Actually, I turned off the trade session and reopened it. That's probably fairly good. But some of the components, the advanced decline data, uh, is always a slightly needs clean up the more you go into the after the close the cleaner it is it should be good now oh yeah 450 should be good now all right uh we talked about a, me getting a signal to go short and yesterday was that signal i guess so uh now we're going to end up a month buying so i hesitated a little bit but then they sold again today not as bad also we are uh 
it's already gone down heavy. So I, I, it's my fault. I'm behind. Okay. Very, very big day yesterday. And then uh, part of it was, uh, of course, I don't know what, I know after the close, FRC really uh, surprised everybody. But the techs were a big worry. Of course, uh, Google came back uh, and nicely, Microsoft out of the ballpark. And today looks like uh, Meta has done well. So what's tomorrow? Amazon, Nancy? I think it's Amazon. So we got a bunch of trades there. I mean, a bunch of uh, potential impacting uh, news there. Uh, believe it or not, we're getting close to a buy. It's not a sell. We're getting close to a buy. We have 50 bar there. We have 50 bar there. And then 200 is behind us. We'll see. But very wishy-washy right now. You know, there was an old saying, it still is, sell it me and go away. So that's also back of my mind. But we'll see. No sign yet. CIS third. Maybe I'm late. I don't know. I, I, if I want to get in, I got to get in. Not hesitate. CI, I mean, say CIS crossed. You got uh, two bars heavy today uh, of the uh, CI diffs, especially on SMPs. Uh, volume, mm, not that much. If you look at it, that's a five color neutral area. Uh, I'm sorry, the range is between uh, five and, ne uh, and 0.5. Uh, not neutral, but in in the center it's kind of neutral. We went to what yesterday? Hold on, we were at uh, seven to one yesterday. Yeah, no, no, not enough to flush it. No, but matter of fact, if you come here, which we're going to talk about later, you could see we got to nineties, but didn't hold it. Did not penetrate nineties. Up and down volume. This is uh, Lowry's. So. Uh, sigma wise, we were doing plus one. Now we are bouncing off of one and a half negative. So I thought today's gonna be worse early on, but it didn't turn out that way. So, so this we had a lot of sideways. That's a problem. Okay, that was more uh linear. Uh, that's because it's 30 names, as all mainly industrial. So that they kind of went together. The, Last two days, we're done. How much? Two twenty. Okay. The big news today really was uh, transportation. Uh, UPS and who was this? And uh, was it Norfolk Southern? It was one of the it was one of their uh, railroads that had the issue. I think it was Norfolk Southern. I forget. And of course, UPS was yesterday. So this tells me uh, SMP is going to be in trouble. Or I'm not SMP. General economy. General economy is going to be in trouble, and so SAP should uh, ease up like whatever they have. That's the bigger problem. Russell could not get over 200 bar since uh, March. Okay, came we tested there. It was in April. Yeah, early part of April, and now that I couldn't hold it, look how it's selling. Gone to uh, negative three. This is negative three, two, negative three sigma. Could we bounce from here? It's possible. We probably need another day or two of uh, tough selling. We'll see. If we, me if we, we meander and go sideways, then we have a bigger uh, 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 pullback. It reminds me of, uh, and they're not related at all, but totally from what? May of 2008. Right, again, the future, the post May and June of 2008, I'm not bringing to this discussion. I'm not saying that this is that. The banks we have now is a far better condition, with a few exceptions of the, uh, you know, the middle range regional banks. But uh, I mean, that time we had problems with Goldman, we had problems with Morgan. Uh, I think Chase was the only one that was decent. Even Wells Fargo had some questions. Uh, big, big problems with city and B of A. We don't have any of those problems now, so I want to make sure I'm not saying this is 2009. No, but chart wise, I think May 16 was the high in 2008, and we just sold and sold and sold. So, sell in May and go away. Okay, uh, D trenders, you can see where they're turning there. It took this the 200 out. This is the first one that's taken to no. Well, this one never came back up to test it and successfully tested 200 
and sold underneath it, and again twice now. Uh, yes, today we crossed under 200 for transportation. Uh, so the trend wise, let's do a count one, two, three, four. So now half are positive and neutral. Uh, and you can see how we see that. Uh, uh, yeah, two of the 50 bars are negative, and then two of the 200 bars are positive. So it's 50 50. Don't know. No, 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 no call here. There's, there's no uh, conclusion here, in my opinion. SV1 Momo. Wow. Momo is negative five. Yeah, this is gone. This is gone pretty much. Listen, negative 10. We could see a bounce. So it's been pretty hefty. Moved here. One sigma on the SP1. I'm sorry, negative one sigma as SP1. Uh, nothing here. The new highs, new lows, nothing. Nothing significant. No. Just meandering. VIX. We came up. Yesterday was a big move in VIX. Actually, we started on Friday. No. It started on Saturday, uh, Monday. It started on Monday, and uh, the VIX got sold. Or, or you know, the, the, the equities rallied. The rally uh, VIX dropped from the negative zero sig. I'm sorry, from zero sig to a uh, little bit below negative one. Now we traded above one and a half between yesterday and uh, almost today. So uh, a little uh, uh, re uh, retracement here on uh, on equities in exchange for the rising walls. Okay, big one there for uh, uh, Russell. Russell had a big one. Sorry, this is my phone. This is a Samsung phone that wants to talk to me. Quiet. Where's Santico? SQ, uh, but oh, that's a different amount coming. Sorry, remind me to have a comment over there on uh, 200 day uh, from the stock charts. Okay, what happened here? They took some of the bets off fast. So the downside risk has got less and less here, B based on uh, the large players putting SPX puts up. Remember, it's a one. One side tail risk, not both side tail risk here. on the SPX. Uh, so, this is the put options, and uh, that's coming down. So, no, they're not expecting a big drop. At least the big boys are not. If they would, this would be rising. Yeah, like we'd have something like this. Now, a straight line, nothing moves in a straight line, but you could see slowly if you take the noise out by Sigma channels, some other version, whatever, whatever methodology you use for to get the noise out. You would see that's rising. Okay. Not here. No, it's just yeah. Doesn't know what to do yet. So no, to me, no signal here either. Treasuries. Okay. First of all, the talk of town right now is uh, because of that. It's a one month versus I think three months. Uh, 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 that uh, bills. Not not notes and not bonds, but T bills. Yeah, one month versus I think three or four months. Huge issue. I think I think we were happy with the uh, what they're getting for uh, three months, but the one month they're pushing it up ninety one day. I'm saying that ninety one day, thirty day. Uh, I, unfortunately, I can't plot it, but that's what I've been hearing on uh, on Bloomberg. Um, Anyhow, the front end, the 91 day, which is a discount rate, is near the highs of seven year high. That's the seven year high, that line, okay. the golden rod. Uh, same thing here, except we're nowhere close to that on the five, on the 10, and 30. Okay. If anything, we have dropped, uh, dropped, dropped somewhat. But the low of the month was already in uh, earlier uh, on, on all these trees. Not here, we're still rising. I don't think Fed is done. I don't think Fed is anywhere near done. Uh, they may stay at quarter point for a while. I, I don't think they're done in two two sessions. Uh, you know, the, the the May and the, what was next? I don't think so. I think you're going to see the quarter for a while. 
until the, again, we, we see real rates. Uh, I, I think uh, there was a um, interview by uh, Schwartzman, uh, if I'm right, yeah, Stephen Schwartzman, on uh, uh, Bloomberg, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, interviews. Uh, that was called peer-to-peer -peer something, I forget. But they are, one of them was announced. That's a little bit earlier version uh, or date of the interview, which was early March. Uh, it was a very good uh, eclectic interview with uh, uh, Ch Chairman uh, Powell. And my take is by listening to it, it's on DVR. You can go back and forth and listen and parse the data and look at it one more time. Um, these basically say, um, I don't care what happens. We're going to execute our mandate, and we're going to, and we're going to be data driven. If that's true, then remember this is legacy. If that's true. Uh, I mean, you know, he saved us in two thousand in in, April, in uh, on March twenty third of 2020, 2020. He saved us. He really did. Uh, to live with that legacy, take that home. He's going to do this right, and I don't think anybody else wants to have him there anyway. This is not. This is a tough issue. Uh, I, I think he's going to hold on until uh, we, you know, we see some slowdown in wage inflation, uh, a little bit of services and so forth. Because uh, right now, I know everybody complains about, hey, does he go to the supermarket? My guess is he doesn't. He's <laughs> too busy. He's got too much help. Uh, but they see the data. They don't need to go to the supermarket. See what price are. They see the data. And data is still up. Now, the, I know cash for the point up that was interesting. Uh, it's called shrinkage factor, which is uh, these interviews are done to aggregate the uh, uh, CPI, PPI stuff. Uh, they hit, you know, X number of uh, products, so forth. And, you know, I don't know, they deal with pushing manager, what have you, but they're doing a bunch of analysis of uh, different data. What they're not getting is, um, what's happening to the size of uh, products? If you, if you go to a restaurant, you'll see all, now the portion sizes are smaller and the price is slightly higher. The portion size that's getting less smaller, I don't know how they factor that in, in the CPIs. Uh, hopefully, they'll come up with some adjustment. Uh, then people will get really, people will get on board with them because uh, the inflation that you see uh, at supermarkets. Are way above what these guys declaring the inflation is. Now they they're in the, they're in the pickle themselves. Uh, remember, the the CPI PPI will dictate, uh, especially CPI, the uh, the entitlement and uh, your cost of living adjustments and all that. Hey, we're about to bust the budget. I mean, we're in a we're in a tough spot. So, um, are they lying? I don't know. That's not my job to say that, but you would think there's some self-interest there for uh, keeping budget tame. But uh, I think what we're heading into is not easy and not good. But again, you know, I said back in 14, go to the webinars. I said between 15 and 16, there's a crossover of demographics and uh, 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 debt. And what's going to happen there? I have no clue. This is 1940. 2014, no, no, 2014. I don't know what's going to happen, but it could be a seismic change. And you've seen what a crazy uh, environment we've had in anywhere, not just politics, but also in the uh, uh, market since 2015 and on. So um, uh, the road ahead is bumpy. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know any better. So that's all I'll leave it at that. Okay, let me also open the questions here just in case. I haven't opened that because the audio was good. Oh, Dennis. Okay. Hi, Dennis. How are you? Sorry, I just opened the questions. Okay, sorry. Thank you, sir. Oh, there's more. Okay. Ralph, I'm good. A couple of complications. Uh, have you heard of rhino virus? Yeah, I've got it twice now. No. Uh, Thanks for asking. No um, uh, therapeutics and no vaccine. As a matter of fact, we found out uh, 
uh, about it. Testing for possibility of another corona. This is a, I got one in G July of last year in visiting LA, but most likely uh, from the Atlanta airport. Uh, and then, uh, then this one came, that was corona. The rhinovirus was December 3rd. And then recently I got it here again too. Uh, but this time I know what to do quickly. Um, it's uh, it's nasty. It's uh, it fills your lungs with uh, mucus, so it, it, you know, you you lose your uh, capacity to breathe. Okay, so and you need heavy duty oxygen immediately. Uh, so I I got a bunch of stuff here. So what's going on? Talk to a couple of doctors, and it's also the, the it's highly highly contagious, highly contagious. Rhino with the H in it. R H I N O virus. Anyhow, so that's that's all. But hey, if it doesn't kill you, it will only make you stronger, right? Okay. Uh, hey, we talked about uh, stock RSI having a rendezvous point. The light, the white line, caught up quickly. And look what happened right after that. Right after that. Matter of fact, we talked about this a couple of days ago in the morning. That saying, hey, this thing just keeps performing, keeps performing. Yes, sir. Would you like to join us? Come on, come on, you come. Attention on deck, Admiral is here. Ooh, they like to know your opinion. No? Okay. He's worried about his steak. Ooh, okay, I'll cook it for you. Let me finish. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, we, as you know, we rolled into the new contract for VIX. So, front month is that. Uh, K23, and so long K23, short Q23. So long uh, eight, uh, May, short uh, uh, August. And that value is 353. Three, um, near, uh, I mean, near three and a half, near four, we get close to the top and it gave it back and we rose fast. And we have not risen yet up enough yet. So I don't think we've seen the zero. Once we get up here, we could see a bottom, but we're not there. It's not there. So, um, and remember, we're, we're kind of up there right now, so early. Can we go back down and test these levels? I don't see why not. But what's the catalyst? Again, what's the catalyst? I think that's reserved for the the last days of fight over the debt ceiling, as we discussed before. That hasn't changed. Right now, we're in a near bounce area. 19, really. These two days were massive. Uh, go start a little bit earlier. Internals got bad first. Look at it. It wasn't the price, it was the internals. This is all internals. There's no price in this. Zero price in SP2. But the internals, there's a bunch of them. Look what it did. As a matter of fact, it peaked here, right? When it went high, look at that divergence. Yeah, that versus here. The, look at that divergence. So the, the, the divergence got set up and we sold internally fast first, then the price. Good indicator will move ahead of price. If, if the indicator is going to move with the price, what do you need the indicator for? Like, like moving averages. It's actually lagging it. So you need to have something ahead of the price. What's in it? Mm, I don't know. Let's not go there. Okay, Larry's up and down volume. Okay. Again, today we were 74, 61, and 74 again, all negative. Yesterday we almost hit negative 90. Didn't work out. We got close, but didn't work out. Remember, these are 30 minutes. So we'll see what happened in intraday also. It didn't never got there. Okay. Maybe one of these tipped below within the 30 minute bar, they came back up. But what matters is the closing basis, right? No closes down there. Um, yeah, Th this this scares the heck out of me, Russell, because this is the one that controls effectively, uh, I mean, psychologically, I should say, what happens to NASDAQ, the big game, and uh, it's just not there. Yeah. These are companies with less borrowing power, less equity. Uh, so they're in a pickle here. Okay, buying power. Oh, fine. Okay. Uh, 
Oops, we went short today. Flying cop on the short side. There was a short. It was a log, went to a short, switched back, and now it's gone to a short tonight at the close. Short here on the mid cap. This is, yeah, the same piece. Short here on the uh, Russell. And a couple of days back, short on the. Uh, uh, I should look at the screen. I did not. It's my bad. Yeah. I've been, you don't know how busy we have been. It's just been horrendous. Yeah. I mean, I wear, I'm wearing different hats constantly, but then it's my fault. It's nobody's fault. It's just, that's, not, and that's not an excuse. It's just that we've been just the last couple of weeks has been really, really busy here. Uh, anything else here? No, I don't have anything else. Okay. Oh, uh, our dear friends here, the C and the E version of F18. Okay. This is what I'm talking about. By the way, we dropped below 45. And they're updating this into a day, I think. I gotta check it into a day. But it used to be an hour, or maybe it's right after the close. But now I get this thing updated so fast. But at least I should try it midday. But 26, that's the SP value. Look where we are now, 48. In two days, completely demolished the 60 area. And remember, 45 to 55 was a neutral area to watch for. We're at 48. So, uh, we'll see what the number is tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow night or maybe Monday. Or, I'm sorry, for Friday night, I may go long. Short term, very short term. I expect a lower problem, but the, the, I, cannot, I can't short the hole. We're too low. Uh, especially when SP2 is, uh, here, I, I've, never, I've never made money shorting this. Yeah, this this tells me you got to bounce. Now, why? I don't know. We'll see. Maybe one of these earnings. Um, what what are the futures are doing now? Let me go overnight. Yeah, yeah, not bad. Well, this had some up there, so we closed negative seven on the futures. Okay, I think Meta did good, right? Uh, is this Meta? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There we go. Up 12 percent. Finally, finally, it's coming back. Yeah, yeah. I had a lot of friends who completely gave up on Facebook, and they were short down here. I don't know what they're doing now, but I don't. I don't bother. Hey, 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 hey! Come, on. killing me. All right. Any questions for me? Webinar is. Has been has it has been being I mean it's being recorded. It will be short, we will closing it shortly. It will be posted here. Uh, we still don't know what happened here where this got so much hits, uh, but it will be posted here under our uh, YouTube channel, which is YouTube YouTube.com slash Analytics. That's actually the first show that this is assigned there. I usually go to where I upload the stuff for for you guys. So it's this button, which is a slash videos, but that's where we are. Michael, that's a possibility. Michael has a good question. Bounce to Fed, then sell possibility. I mean, you gotta realize, and you're one of the you always ask some of the best questions here, and you do it consistently here. I appreciate that, Michael. Um the, 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 let me remind you, Fed, this Fed, under, under chairmanship of uh, Chairman Powell, has had one, I believe, one positive day on the FOMC. Okay. And so it's got bad, so bad that I, I usually sit back. You know, I may trade like one trade post FOMC. Yeah. And if I make money, I'm happy. I'm not touching it. If I lose money, I have. Hit myself on the back, on back of my hand, on my hand, and say, "Bad boy, you, you knew you should have touched it." It's almost impossible to make money with that uh, on the FOMC afternoon. So, probably, yeah, probably. That's that's a good possibility, Mark. Yeah. I think we'll set up for a bounce, and then maybe they're gonna do that to juice it up, so that then the sell will be big. Okay. By the way, uh, there was a report by. Uh, I was on Bloomberg. 
couple of nights ago, I think it was. Or was it or was it last night or the night before? That's I forget. That said they're expecting that we could be like Japan, where for ten years forward we may not go anywhere. I'll call you back in fifteen. I'm in the middle of the webinar. Oh, sorry guys. So uh the issue is I mean I don't know about that, how how real that could be. It was uh I think it was a British uh, financial analyst that said that, that they think that the, our markets would be flat and range bound for 10 years, starting in a couple of years from now. Well, you know, I would love that. As a day trader, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's like, it's like going to Toys R Us every day or, uh, uh, or Wake Up or Disney, you know? Uh, you know, if, 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 if we were the, if we were the, um, uh, Bracketed market, uh, you know, you're gonna have that cycle in volatility that's gonna repeat itself. You're gonna see mean reversion. That means that, and if, and of course, uh, buy, buy and hope is dead because you're not gonna go anywhere. The theta will kill you even if you buy options. Best thing is to be day traded. But anyway, who knows? Who knows where we're gonna be? All I know is this uh, we gotta solve the debt problem. This debt is going to cost us a lot of headaches. We, this cannot keep growing. This party cannot continue like this. Numbers will come to play a game here, finally. You know, we can detach from numbers and kick the can down the road. But remember, last four years or last, no, in 2016 to 2020, we added 25% of the debt. 25% of the debt. Eight trillion came in. We just, we just cannot keep on doing this. So maybe that will that will bring some senses to us. But or more, maybe it will bring some senses to the people who are lending to us saying, what are we doing this for? Uh, we don't mind because we're paying it with cheaper dollars. But if the rates go high, they you know, uh, we may not be able to borrow that much or maybe not be able to give up uh, impact on other parts. You know, defense, Medicare, Medicaid, Entitlements, all of those going to be impacted. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, as long as I can keep my day trading going, I don't mind. But for average guy out there, I feel sorry. I really do. Uh, and of course, some of them got caught between, uh, you know, 401k to 201k and now 101k. Uh, you know, half the US population doesn't have retirement. Soon they're going to retire. Who's going to take care of them? Think about that. So it's depressing, I know. Any other questions for me? Did that mean to close it on that note? But hey, blame it on Michael. He brought it up. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Poor Michael. <laughs> no. But seriously, uh, no, I think we have a very interesting uh, uh, texture showing up soon in the markets. I mean, you could see, look, in two days already. Look, look, let me bring it here. Let me bring this here. I mean, this doesn't surprise you. I don't know what does. In two days, okay? Look where we were. First of all, we are by the indicator, okay? We went from overbought on the April, right? <laughs> yeah, April 3rd to oversold. It took us about four weeks. And we went a new high in between, but the indicator said, no, 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 no. Uh, that's a fake. Don't you do that. Boys and girls, any other questions for me? That's a hedge fund I gotta get back to. Okay, guys, thank you all. Hey, Jim, how are you? Thank you all for attending our program today. We'll do one next week again. Okay. Uh oh, eighteen. I'll be out. So 18th of uh, May, I'm going to Denver. My niece is getting married. So I'm going to go down. Yeah, so I'll be on the 17th. I'll leave early on the 18th. Uh, yeah, and then I'll be back Sunday afternoon-ish. So I'm not doing it overnight. Like I'm not doing a red eye out of Miami. I almost hit four cars on the way back. It was really bad. If I'm doing a red eye, I think I'm taking Uber. Yeah. So anyhow, but 18, I'll be gone. So 
A third will have a webinar, not 10th and 17th. Yeah. I don't know about 17th. Maybe we do that on 16th. Oh, by the way, no, 16th is we put in. Uh, oh, let me go address that issue. Hold on. Uh, there we go. Always for, for our schedules, our members, you don't need to log in. You're going to see it. We moved. Uh, yeah, we can do 16th. Hopefully, that by then, Marshall will be ready. Marshall is doing a lot better. Uh, Orb data is posted, uh, up, up to date now. Uh, and uh, that gives us some relief uh, because he actually trades, the, I mean, the, the system house there in Chicago trades his money live. And, uh, uh, and he's a good keeper of data and records. And I want a third party. I didn't want to have anything to do with it. I, I, I don't want to make any claims. I want actual statements to make the claim, not me. As always, transparency is my middle name. Remember, hey Scott, thank you, sir. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Dennis. Appreciate that. Good night, Greg. Good night, all. Closing this and going to post uh, processing, and I gotta get back to a couple of calls. Thank you all. <laughs>